Good morning, everybody. And uh, wow, what a what an amazing 24 hours it's been of prayer. I, I've found it incredible, and, and I know he, hearing all these different comments and things on Facebook has been amazing. So we just thought it'd be really nice to to finish with a little bit of of worship and and just a kind of you know prayers of, of thankfulness for answered prayers and for for this time and and what God's spoken to us during this time. So we'll start with a song. This is a uh, Majesty. say a really big thank you to all of you who've taken part in this 24 hours of prayer. I found it an amazing experience, seeking God as a community, hearing all your thoughts and all the words that have been given to you, the images. It's amazing. From Pete's picture of unity in the quarry to Christine's picture of the sofa being lifted up with prayer and a hidden coin beneath it. We all know what it's like to find hidden treasure behind the sofa, don't we? It's really amazing. But I've been thinking a lot this, this over the past 24 hours about corporate prayer, prayer. I mentioned it on the Facebook group. You might have seen it. 
I was looking at Nehemiah and the way he pray, prayed, and my reading yesterday was in Daniel chapter 9 and the way he prayed. Now, Daniel prayed at the beginning of the exile, and Nehemiah prayed at the end of the exile when they were coming out of it. But the prayers are terribly similar. But there's an urgency to the end of Daniel's prayer, which I love. And I think we need to get behind this urgency. Daniel cries out, O Lord, listen. O Lord, forgive. O Lord, hear and act for your sake, O my God. Do not delay because your city and your people bear your name. We bear the name of Christ. He is on our hearts. He is there within us. His, the Holy Spirit is pulsating out of us in our every move. And the Spirit is longing to move us. So, as we come out of this 24 hours of prayer, what I want to encourage all of us to do is be praying as a community, to be loving as a community. The prayers that Nehemiah and Daniel use, they pray that the whole community is forgiven. How about if we prayed for the forgiveness of the whole of Lisgard and beyond, the whole of our local area? How about if we poured our energy and crying out to God with such passion that they will come and know the name of Jesus? I love that thought, that we cry out to God as one voice, many voices re raising up, petitioning the same sound, that God will forgive our community we live within, and that they are chosen by him. So let's cry out to the Lord. Let's say, O oh Lord, listen. Let's say, O oh Lord, forgive. Let's say, O oh Lord, hear and act now. Let's plead with him for the Lord's sake. O oh my God, do not delay, because your city and your people bear your name. We're just going to have a moment of prayer now. Our Lord God, Heavenly Father, you are the truth. You are the healer of all. Lord God, come upon us. Come upon us once more as you've come upon us this past 24 hours, as we've read through the comments through Facebook, that we've seen things, that you've spoken words into people's hearts, words of love and encouragement, words of unity and faith. Holy Spirit, move upon us, empower us, and strengthen us to do your work. May we be your love in this world. May we be your hand and your feet, your eyes and your ears, your mouthpieces. Help us do it as one body, working together in unity for all, that we are united in declaring your name through our words, our feet, and our actions. Sing the chorus of that again, Majesty, just to, to, to kind of seal that prayer. Sing in Majesty, Majesty, Your grace has found me just as I am. Empty-handed but alive in your hands Singing majesty Majesty 
Forever I am changed by your love In the presence of your majesty Morning. Well, it's uh, it's so good to be here at the end of this uh, this great marathon of uh, of prayer. Now, often when people say marathon, they they use it in a kind of negative sense. But if you're a runner like me, a marathon's a good thing, and you, you look forward to something like that. And I've been looking forward to this time of prayer for for such a long, long time. And for me, um, I wanted to pray us to pray as a, as a as a church for our community, for our area. But I also wanted to focus in on what what does God want us to do as a church now? That, that's a real thing to ask, is it? What do you want, Lord? What do you want, Lord, for us as a church? Especially as we come out of this time of, of, of lockdown. And what do you want us to do? How do you want us to be? How do you want us to live? How do you want us to pray? And these are some thoughts that I've had, really. And it's been interesting reading through the comments on, on Facebook and other things that people have said. And the thing that's been coming out more and more and more is, is simply this, that we need to keep praying and we need to hold on. Because when Noah was, uh, Noah was told to build the ark, so he had to do something, he did the ark. And then when, the, when the, everything happened, when the storm happened, he just had to sit tight. There was no rudder on the, on the ark, he literally just had to be there. And then when the ark finished, then he got on with the process of rebuilding the world, rebuilding everything else. But during the storm, he simply had to hold on and wait and pray and be obedient. And that's something that's really, really come over to me. Because we're in a storm now, as we know, we're in this time of COVID where it's it's either a storm or for some of you, it's like a long period of of intense calm being becalmed. Same thing, it's hard, isn't it? But we're going to come out of this at some point. But during this, what we do is we hold on, we pray. And we remember that God is in control and he will lead us. He will let us know what's, what he wants us to do, simply if we be with him. Phil mentioned about the, uh, that, that coin, that picture of the coin. Well, that reminded me of the, of the, pearl, of great, the pearl of great value in Matthew 13. The kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. Well, that is what we need to do, isn't it? We need to seek the kingdom of God. When we seek the kingdom of God, we find that pearl, we find that coin that's under the sofa. We find the thing that we're looking for. So hold on, pray, seek the kingdom of God, keep our eyes open, and then the way will become clear and we will serve our Lord. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, I... I thank you for answered prayer. Thank you for the words that you've spoken to so many people. And I thank you that we have the gift, we have the privilege, the unbelievable privilege that we can speak to the most incredible, powerful God in the universe. That we can come before you and you will listen. Sometimes it's hard to, sometimes easy to forget that that's a privilege. We have an audience with you, Lord. Lord, we pray that we can carry on listening, we can carry on talking to you, that we can hold on and that we can trust you, Lord. Lord, we trust you. I sing this, the chorus of this song, Build My Life, just as a response to what Steve was just praying then. Holy, there is no one like you. There is no one beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around holy holy there is no one like you there is none beside you 
open up my eyes in wonder Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me That's our prayer Fill us up and send us out So as we look across our, our church community, let us look at each other with prayerful eyes, looking into each other's heart, holding on to each other, loving each other, knowing each other, and welcoming the other into our community. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we praise your name. We lift you up through our relationships with each other. May your spirit move us to become more, well, to become closer, to know each other better, that we can be one with each other. Amen. will build my life on you, on you, and I will build my life on you. my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation that I will put my trust in you alone. And I will not be shaken. And I will build my life upon your love it is a firm foundation and I will put my trust in you alone and I will not be shaken for you are Beside you, open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. As we draw to a, a close of our service, we, we can't finish 24 hours of prayer without praying for the storm that we're in. So Lord Jesus, I, I give you this time, this time of, of real difficulty for so many of us. For those who are housebound, for those who are, who are frightened, for those, who, for those who fear, for those who are working so hard, and for those who lead. Lord, there's so much going on at the moment. We, we can't pray for it all by, by name, but we can trust you, Lord. So, Lord, I pray that you will take control over this, this virus, that you will be the Lord, that you are the Lord, that we will remember that, we, that you, are, you are in control of all. And, Lord, many of us fear, but we pray, Lord, that we can not fear anything but you. 
Lord, we are Christians. We celebrate your name. We fear God. We trust you, God. And Lord, we lift you on high. So, Lord, I pray that you, you will be Lord and sovereign over this time. That you will be the one who lifts this world to a new place with you. Lord, and as you do this, we pray that we can hold on and that we can pray. And our faith, in faith, we will trust you. Amen. Let's just finish by singing the bridge for that song. But instead of I will build my life, let's sing we will build our lives upon your love. It is a firm foundation. We will put our trust in you alone. And let's really declare that together as a church. We will build our lives upon your love. It is a firm foundation. We will put our trust in you alone and we will not be shaken we will build our lives upon your love it is a firm foundation we will put our trust in you alone and we will not be shaken. At the very end of Luke's gospel, when we're, we have the story of the ascension, what we're told is this, that Jesus led them out to Bethany and then he, be, he raised his arms and he blessed them. And while he was blessing them, is whilst he was blessing them, that's when he left them. So that blessing is continuous, it carries on because he was blessing them as he went and he's blessing us now and he'll bless us in the future. So Lord Jesus, we pray, pray for your blessing on us now. That continuous blessing has always been and always will be. And the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon us and remain with us this day and forevermore. Amen.